to the issue of the menopause. MPs are debating whether hormone replacement therapy should be free for menopausal women in England. This is a private member's bill, so it's bought by a backbench MP, Labour MP Carolyn Harris, and there's a rally in support of it underway in Parliament Square today. Well, Caroline Noakes, the chair of the Women and Equalities Committee and Conservative MP for Romsey and Southampton North, is at that rally, and she joins me now. Hello. Hello, uh, Caroline. Thank you for joining us. So how well attended is that rally? The weather's pretty awful today. Is there a decent turnout? Well, the weather's pretty grim and we've been out here for a while now. I think the business in the house finished around about half 11. But what a great result for Carolyn Harris and all her hard work on the menopause over the last few years. So this is an issue that really up until I would say the last year has not actually had much publicity. It's been somewhat taboo. But thanks to uh, the work of uh, people like yourself and your colleagues and also a number of celebrities, uh, talking about the menopause uh, has become a lot more mainstream, hasn't it? Where do you think we're at in terms of uh, sort of public recognition and, and in terms of employers understanding how much of an issue it, it is for so many women? Well, we've had with us today Davina McCall, of course, who's been such a trailblazer on this issue. Penny Lancaster and Mariella Frostrup have all come and joined us today. But the reality is, and you're right to point out the impact of menopause in the workplace, women over the age of 45 are the fastest growing sector in the labour market. And it's really important that they're given the support from their employers and indeed from the government to make sure that they can carry on playing a productive, constructive role in organisations, companies, etc. And so that's why today's bill was so important, talking as it is about HRT and the benefits that that can bring. But my committee is also doing a whole raft of work on menopause in the workplace so that we can have a real conversation with employers about what more they can do to support their staff. And where do you think employers are at with this generally now? Do you, do you believe that there's been much progress or are we still at the stage of warm words and not actually translating into much policy change uh, when it comes to uh, perhaps the, the rights of women to take time off or uh, to ask for different environments that, that make their job easier during that time? We've got some real trailblazers. Timpsons, who are paying for HRT for their staff. Uh, companies like Tesco's, which have amended their uniforms so that menopausal women can be more comfortable at work. We've seen the Menopause Workplace Pledge that's supported by the Countess of Wessex. Uh, there are some real improvements that are going on, but there's a, lot, there's a lot further to go. And my committee's heard from women HR directors who've been embarrassed to talk about their own menopause symptoms. So it's absolutely crucial that employers understand that if they want to keep women in the workplace playing a productive role, we can't afford to lose them once they turn sort of 50 or so. Um, and I think that's a real challenge. And I think at the bottom of it, there's a, a real problem still with ageism. But as far as I'm concerned, my committee will do an important piece of work. We'll make recommendations to government and see what more progress we can make on top of what we've already seen today. And is your committee talking to health insurance companies at all? Are you aware that some health insurance companies simply have a kind of blanket exclusion on all menopause-related issues? And given that uh, for some women this is a, a period that doesn't just last a couple of years, are affected by menopause-related symptoms for perhaps a decade or more, uh, do you think it's acceptable uh, for health insurance companies to say, uh, actually, we're not going to cover anything relating to the menopause, uh, you know, this after all being something that affects uh, pretty much every single woman on the planet. So uh, this is one of the really big questions that my committee is asking at the moment. Should we make the menopause a protected characteristic? We know it will affect 51% of people. Uh, we know that it will impact women maybe for a decade. That's a phenomenally long time. And so I think it's absolutely imperative that we don't see blanket exclusions around menopause uh, symptoms. And also we have to understand there are a really wide range of symptoms. Everybody reverts to the hot flush as being the one and only. It isn't. It's sleeplessness. It's anxiety. 
we've heard about women being prescribed antidepressants to cope with the menopause when quite obviously HRT would have been a better solution. We hear about night sweats, about people who are simply unable to operate because of repeated migraines. Um, it's and not to mention sort of aches and pains and stiffness, all sorts of things. So to have a blanket exclusion on those sorts of symptoms, well, you're potentially uh, including a, a range of other conditions and diseases as well. So, you know, it's really short-sighted of any organisation to try and implement that sort of exclusion.